guess we're going over here, and I guess we're going over on the boxes. Um, yeah. Okay, coffin it is. Oh boy, we got a coffin. They walked slowly past the row of crates until they came to the coffin. They stopped and nodded to one another, and Jimpe put his hand on the lid of the coffin. Mommy! What is? Is that a joke? Was that a joke? Just kidding. He smirked heartily at his own joke. Junpei grumbled and shook his head. Whatever, just open it. Junpei resisted the urge to remind Santa that he would have had it open a long time ago if Santa hadn't interrupted, and quickly threw off the lid of the coffin. Oh, that Santa, always with his quirks, you know, like the, like, I remember the last one he pulled at the end of the first playthrough, where he pulled a gun on everyone and, and, uh, took, kind of, took, uh, a, a helpless girl hostage and then, uh, escaped on his own and left three people to die. Wasn't that fun? Oh, that kidder. They appeared inside. Oh my god, it's the gun, 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 it's the gun. Junpei, take the gun! Contrary to what they'd expected, the inside of the large co inside of the coffin was quite large. It was mostly empty, but not completely so. Laying on the bottom was a rusty key. And unload the gun as well. First thing, shoot all of the bullets off. Right now. We don't need to deal with that. Next to the key. It's a gun! Do you remember this from the other playthrough where it was held to your head? This is yeah, do you remember this from the other playthrough where you held it to her head? This is... A revolver. It looks pretty old. Still usable though. I wonder if this is a replica? Oh no, it's the real deal. Chippe reached down slowly and cautiously picked up the revolver. And watch it not be the real deal. It's like, wait, what does this mean? <laughs> His hand felt heavy. He checked the cylinder. There were six bullets. Shoot them all off right now. He'd never seen a real gun, or even a real bullet before. He couldn't tell if these were real or not. The barrel was rifled, and nothing seemed to be blocking it. As they had said, the gun was a very old one. However, it appeared to have been well maintained. If it was a real gun, Junpei thought it would most likely function perfectly. It was real! Holding the gun made Junpei feel unpleasant. Carefully, he placed it back in the coffin. No, don't tell me you're going to fall into the same trap Seven did. You're not going to take it? Of course not. Oh no, you got to be kidding me. This is just going to have the same ending then. All something like this is going to do is cause more trouble. Take the gun, fire off all the rounds. Right now. All right, this is common sense, isn't it? <laughs> I would think so. That's what I would do. I'd be like, okay, guys, stand back. I don't want anyone using this, so I'm just going to shoot off all the rounds right now. That's It's a powerful weapon that gives one person a huge advantage. Something like that would be way too dangerous to have around. We're in enough danger already. You know what, you're right, it is dangerous to have around. So make it useless! Or crush it! Do something! Just don't leave it there! Even if I hadn't seen Santa's playthrough, I would be thinking this. Like, ugh, Santa's playthrough? That's what I think of it as, because Santa's the one who essentially is the hero of that story. <laughs> He's his own hero. I suppose you're right. Maybe. Maybe Zero put this gun here hoping that something like that might happen. In other words, maybe he put it in here to make us fight each other. In that case, we should most certainly leave it here. No! 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 Santa, I'm gonna watch you this whole time. I told Jump Jumpei, do what I want you to! I, for one, have no desire to let Zero control me. The others nodded. They had no desire to be under Zero's control either. Okay, we got that figured out. You're not gonna leave that key in there, are you? Yeah, yeah, of course I'm not. Jippe picked up the rusty key and slid the top of the coffin back into place. They gun back where they had found it. God damn it! Fire off all the rounds! Is that not a simple thing to think of? Oh hey, if I do this, no one can use it. Even if I just leave it here. <laughs> Damn it! 
You gotta be joking. This is a joke. This is a joke. Are we just gonna... Okay, Santa has to... If Santa leaves us not even one time, like... Oh my gosh. Okay, search it. A rusty key. Maybe I can use this. Oh my gosh, this hurts so much. This playthrough has to have a different ending, though. There's no way you can go through all the other three doors and still have the same ending. But if it does, then how? Because the gun is still in there. Still in there, right? There's a revolver in this coffin. Are you sure? Open it. What was this thing for? Jumpy. I know, I'll be there in just a minute. This rubs me the wrong way. All of the wrong ways. You gotta be... Ugh. Gosh darn it. That would lead to like the same ending, wouldn't it? This is just gonna be the same bullshit. If it's not, then why not? Is it because of something that happens in the other playthrough? Possibly, I don't know. Let's just put this key in here and... Yes! Sounds like that did it. Yay! Look, looks like it's open, Jumpy. I see. This should open this door. Hey, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Santa's first. Just... Yes! It's opening. Oh boy, I found it! Hooray! So, we're, we're coming to the end of this, right? All we have left is the conclusion, again. <laughs> the hallway that left the cargo room headed straight down the stern. Jump in, the other three proceeded down it silently. I'm, I'm excited, but also I'm scared. And kind of confused still. Lots of things. Some distance along it, a large room opened up on the left-hand side. It looked familiar. An iron grate covered each of the elevators. Jumping his companions drew to a stop. I began to discuss what the next move might be. Oh, by the way, I was thinking about something, uh... Well, I mean, I, I thought about it a while ago, and I never really brought it up, and, and then I never bothered to, because I thought, well, it's not true. But just in case it ends up being true in some form, um, I thought when it said like restart with memories I remember the title of the like the little beginning of the intro that I did see where it's like what do I know or whatever and I'm like wait maybe every time it restarts he actually keeps his memories somehow magically I don't know and I'm like maybe that's what he knows the previous playthrough I don't know but uh, that's what I thought of but I guess that's not the case and it was jumping his companions due to a stop and again discuss what the next movie should be we've seen this elevator before we got off the one on the left just a little while ago so we went through the number six door, and that took us to the engine room. Yeah, so after that, we passed through the cargo room. And now we're back here. In other words, we made a loop. We're back where we started. Jippe approached the elevator. Gently, he pushed the triangular button on the wall next to it. A moment passed. Da, da, da. The elevator door opened. And shut. Pushing the button, it apparently restored power to the elevator. The elevator is now functional. Hooray? What do we do? Should we return to C-Deck? No, the hallway keeps going. Even if we do end up going back, I think we should see what's down there first. I agree. Let's go. Oh boy, I know what we're gonna see. Their decision made, jump by his companions, left the elevators behind, and continued down the hallway. Da -na 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 -da -na 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 Sometime later, Santa, who had been walking several paces in front of the rest, suddenly stopped. Set in the wall in front of him was a door. So far as Jimmy could see, there was no other way to proceed. It was the door or nothing. Alright, let's open it. Uh, comment question of the day, because you never know. Um, someone might actually have a legitimate response to this. I just thought of something random when I was thinking about doors. What is your favorite type of wood, or maybe your favorite tree? Uh, I really like maple trees, but, uh, like, because maple leaves, because I'm Canadian, right? But also, uh, I like mahogany, because I like to say mahogany, but everyone likes that, so. Yeah, let me know in the comments below.
Let's open it. Trippy took a deep breath, readied himself, then grabbed the doorknob and pulled the door open. He paused for a moment, then stepped through into the room. And there he saw the number that had hung over their head since they'd woken up. Dun dun da! Nine. Like the numbers on every other door, this one too was a rough shape made of red paint, or is it blood? <laughs> its door was set into the back wall of the room. Jippe leapt toward it with a sudden burst of hopeful energy. It was a large double door, heavy and full of solemn importance. He grabbed hold of the door handle and shook. Nothing. But he hadn't expected it to open. The red sat on the wall, next to the door. The screen read vacant. Finally, they'd found it. Jippe felt himself overwhelmed by a torrent of emotion. At last, they'd found the exit. But cold gripped his heart, and he knew all too well why. As he stood frozen, unsure of what to think or feel. Jumpy! Look! Behind you! He spun around. And couldn't believe what he saw. It was a door with the number 9 written across it. Was there a second door? Da -na -na. Why? X, Z. Jumpy's voice was barely audible, even to himself. He stumbled toward the second door, as if somehow compelled. It was a small single door. It sat in the starboard corner of the room, on the same wall as the door they entered from, but in the opposite corner. Nine. There was no mistaking it. A red sat on the wall next to the door as well. Jupe shook the door handle pointlessly and muttered to himself, Why? Why the hell are there two doors? It was Santa who answered. There were always two doors. Uh, what? What? Just think about it. Zero never said there's only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Yeah, but... I, I don't know. I don't like the way that's worded. Of course, we just assumed that there was only one. After all, why would there be more than one? Oh, man. Jeez. Jumpe was stunned. Zero's trick had taken him completely by surprise. There were two doors. So maybe that was the sick joke. Actually, yeah, maybe if they are both real, then the sick joke was that he wanted to watch us fight each other, trying to think of, like, maybe kill each other off to try and, you know, find the group that would get in the one door. But in reality, there were two doors all along. But, uh... Um, that hasn't worked, at least so far. That meant that all nine people who had met at the central staircase could escape and leave no one behind. Now the reason for the bracelet numbers being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is clear. Divided into two, the digital root for both teams would be 9. For instance, 1, 2, 7, 8, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, the digital root for both teams would be 9. Or 2, 3, 4, 9, and 1, 5, 6, 7, 8. The digital root would also be 9. There were many other workable combinations, but they all ended the same way, with the digital root of 9. What did that mean? The answer was quite simple. From the very beginning, the Nonary game was designed to save all nine people. Zero hadn't been lying. Zero had never said there's only one door. But anyone who found themselves in the game would have assumed that was the case. Fights would have broken out. One team would likely betray or deceive the other. Someone might be hurt. Someone might get killed. But eventually they would reach the room Jumpy now found himself in and realize the pointlessness of whatever violence they'd visited upon each other. There were two doors. No need to kill each other. They'd understand and be appalled, overwhelmed with guilt at what they'd done. Perhaps, perhaps that was the purpose of the game. That was how the Nornary game was meant to be played. Fortunately, they hadn't started to fight one another, at least not yet. But if one misstep was made, if the wrong mistakes happened, the stakes would would rise and the noose would tighten. 
To be fair, you do think one person is dead. Although you shouldn't because Clover already told you about the prosthetic arm, goddammit! <laughs> the thought of it sent a chill down his spine. So, what are we gonna do, Junpei? The voice broke through Junpei's frantic thoughts. Santa's voice. It brought Junpei back to his senses. No use worrying about the future, he needed to figure out what they were going to do next. In the future. What? It's just... Next implies the future, you know. There were four people in the room. Ace, Santa, Junpei, and June. Their births and numbers were... 1356. Digital root would be 6. In other words, the four of them couldn't open a door with the number 9. But, what if there were only three? Could door 9 be open with three of them? Yes, it could, but he, you'd have to leave June behind, you dumbass. It took him no time at all to determine the answer. There was only one combination of three people that would give a digital root 9. 1 plus 3 plus 5 equals 9. That would mean... No. We gotta go back. That wasn't a possibility he was willing to consider. Oh, Santa doesn't bring it up first, huh? Huh? Well, well, let, look at who cares about her more. The regular person cares about her more than the creepy stalker. <laughs> Santa and Ace agree. Yup. I agree. We cannot leave June behind. Just by a little breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. Are, are you sure? I don't mind staying. There's no reason for you to stay. Jun's body betrayed her true feelings. Her eyes were wet with the beginnings of tears and her legs shook. It's okay. There's no way we'd leave you behind. Santa had said what Junpei had known the moment he realized which three people could go through the door. Besides, I'd rather drown at the bottom of the ocean than escape with this sausage fest. <laughs> Maybe I'll get to go to Atlanta. Uh, are you sure you don't mean Atlantis? Oh, right. Ha <laughs> why are you laughing, Junpei? Perhaps it was the sudden reassurance that no one wanted to leave June behind, but Junpei laughed harder than he had in some time. Santa and Ace smiled. Well, Junpei is normal, um, Ace is nice, and Santa's a creepy stalker. You guys... June blinked tears from her uh, eyes and bit her lip. She didn't seem to know what else to say. Very well. Best we head back to Sea Deck then. We should be able to take the elevator we passed earlier. Perhaps Clover 7 and Lotus will have returned from door 1. Even as they spoke, they knew finding the others wouldn't improve the situation. There was no way they could be split into teams that could both go through the doors. Ace knew it. They all knew it. But there was nothing else they could do. They would find the other three and search for another solution. Alright, let's go. Ace looked at all three of them, then turned and headed through the door. Can we go tell Clover that Snake is alive and then try and look for Snake? <laughs> Santa and June followed. Junpei started toward the door, then stopped. He'd been too busy with other concerns to notice the room itself. It didn't seem terribly important now, but what exactly was it? Junpei looked around the room for the first time noticing the things that weren't doors with nines on them. Was this a, a red carpet ran between two columns of wooden benches that ran the length of the room. The carpet began at the large set of double doors and ran toward the bow. Toward... Junpei wasn't sure. An altar, perhaps? With that same goddamn coffin that we heard noises in, but then we never got to see the inside of because it was fucking too big to continue. What the hell game? Um, small rectangular alcohol at the end of the carpet and inside the alcohol was a raised platform. Resting on top of the platform was a coffin. A coffin. A coffin? What on earth was a coffin doing in a place like this? Before Junpei had time to answer that question. Hey Junpei! Halt! Oh, the hell are you doing? Let's move! Santa's voice echoed in front, in from the hall outside. Right, okay. I'll be right there. I just want to check one fir thing first. I want to go back to the other room and check the coffin because, ugh. Junpei turned on his heel and left the quiet, somber room.